Okay, today we're going to do 6.3. We're actually taking a step backwards and we're going to do estimating sums and differences. And I'm going to show you two different ways that you can estimate sums and differences when you are doing fractions. So you will need either a whiteboard or a scratch piece of paper to work out some of these problems with me. The first strategy we're going to talk about is using a number line. The first problem that we're going to work with is 1 6 plus 3 eighths. The first thing I'm going to do is create a number line using 1 6 as the fraction. So I start with 0 over 6, 1 over 6, 2 over 6, 3 over 6, 4 over 6, 5 over 6, and 6 over 6. Those are the actual fractions. Now I'm going to show you the benchmarks in blue. 0 over 6 is 0. Any time there is a 0 in the numerator, that it is equal to 0. 1 half goes under 3 6 because 3 6 is an equivalent fraction to 1 half. And then 6 over 6 is 1. Anytime you have the numerator and the denominator the same, it is always equal to 1. So now that I have my benchmarks in, I'm going to identify where 1 6 would fall on this number line. I've indicated that with a red dot. So now I need to determine is 1 6 closer to 0? Or is it closer to 1 half? The answer is that it is closer to 0, so I round that to 0. Now, I've already created the number line for 3 eighths, so go ahead and copy that down. It's the exact same process as what I showed you with 1 6. So after your number line is created, go ahead and add in your benchmarks 0. 1 half under the 4 eighths, and then 1 under the 8 over 8. Now I need to mark where 3 eighths is on my number line. It is in between 0 and 1 half again. So now I need to determine is it closer to 0 or is it closer to 1 half. And as you can see, it's closer to 1 half. So I'm going to round 3 eighths to 1 half. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and add. So 1 six we said was rounded to 0, and 3 eighths we said was rounded to 1 half. So when I add that, 1 half plus 0 is just 1 half. The other strategy is just to use mental math. It's not as easy to, as a visual to see it, but it is a little bit quicker see, because you don't have to create a number line. Now, like I said, I've reminded you a little bit in yellow and green to the right, but it says a fraction with the same numerator and denominator equals 1. For example, 2 over 2 is 1. 40 over 40 is 1. 84 over 84 is 1. So keep that in mind when using this mental math strategy. First thing I need to do is round 9 over 10. What I notice about 9 over 10 is that 9 is almost 10, which means it's almost 10 over 10, so that equals 1. Now I need to round 5 eighths. If you don't know already, if the numerator is half of the denominator, then that is an equivalent fraction to 1 half. Since 5 is close to 4 and 4 eighths is 1 half, then I can round that to 1 half. Once I've rounded them both, then I can subtract and I get 1 half. Now I'm going to show you a problem using both strategies to show you that you're going to get the same answer regardless. So I've already created my number line and I have my benchmarks ready to go. I'm first going to do 5 6. So I need to find that on the number line. And it is closer to 1. So 5 6 rounds to 1. Now I'm creating my number line for 3 8. Add in my benchmarks identify where 3 eighths is on the number line, and I realize that it's closer to 1 half. So 3 eighths rounds to 1 half. Again, same thing. I take my rounded answers, and I add them, and my answer is 1 half. Now I'm going to kind of draw a line and box off this strategy so I can show you the other one. So 5, 6, and I'm writing it right now, the numerator and denominator are about the same. So that equals 1. For 3 eighths, the numerator is about half of the denominator, like in the other example. So that rounds to 1 half. I add them together, 
and I get 1 and 1 half. Now this is a mixed number, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Here are two problems I want you to go ahead and try, but before you do that, I want to point out something. If you don't know this already, a mixed number is a whole number and a fraction. So if there's a mixed number, you already know you have a number greater than 1. So you need to consider that when you are rounding and when you are adding and subtracting. So the first one says 2 and 7 eighths. So keep in mind there's already two whole numbers there. So if you're rounding 7 eighths up, then you're going to have to have another whole number. So go ahead and pause the video and try these on your own and push play when you are ready to check them. Okay, here's the work. I'll explain a little bit what I did. So, like I mentioned earlier with the mixed numbers, 2 is already a whole number. 7 eighths is close to 1, so I add the 2 plus the 1 to get 3. 2 fifths, I rounded that to 1 half because 5 is close to 4 and 2 is half of 4. So when I subtract 3 minus 1 half, I get 2 and 1 half. For the other problem, I already have one whole number, and then 8 ninths is almost 1, so I add those two together to give me 2. The other fraction is 4 and 8 tenths. I already have 4, so I pulled that out. 8 over 10 is almost 1, so I add the 4 and the 1, and get, that gives me 5. Then I add the all together, and I have 2 plus 5, and that gives me 7. I didn't use the number line for either of these, but you are welcome to use the number line. Estimating is a good skill to have, especially when you're wanting to check your answers to make sure that they make sense. So now you're going to work on a couple of math journal pages to practice what I just taught you.